Now we'll want to go in here and destructure all our values off of settings. So we'll grab frequency, detune, Q, gain, and type off of settings. We'll set those here. Value equals frequency. Value equals detune. Here, value equals Q. And down here, value equals gain. And then you'll also notice since we set these ones to such low numbers, just a 10, it's still stepping one at a time. So we only get one, two, three, four, five, six. We only get 10 uh, little places on here. So we can go ahead, well, 11 with the zero. We can go ahead and say, we want a step equal to 0 0.1 and also down here a step of 0 0.1 let's save that okay so now we can see we're getting a much finer control we've got the same amount of steps on there as we would have if we had our default values of 0 to 100 on there and our steps of 1 so now we'll want to go into app.js and we'll want to start writing a function to change the filter type. And this is going to be super similar to our change oscillator one type, except for after we destructure ID off of e.target, we're going to use it to set the filter settings. We'll pass it an object, current filter settings, and the type is going to be the value that we're getting as ID there. And then we'll say filter.type equals ID. And remember there's no dot value here because this is just a string and not an object. So we're gonna pass that down here, change type equals change filter type. Save that, go in here. We'll grab our change type uh, function from up there and then we'll come down here create a new param section give it a heading with type here this time we're going to do buttons we'll do on click change type and then the id for this one will be low pass with no caps and then the class name will be backticks dollar sign curly brackets inside here we're going to say if type triple equals low pass then include the class of active right here and then inside between our little caret tags right there and a little whatever those are um, we're going to put low pass and then before we save we're going to highlight this make four more copies of it so five in total I'm not going to do all the different kinds you can if you want to but for right now I'm just going to do these ones I'll say high pass and remember it's here here and here um, this one's going to be notch this one will be low shelf and this one will be high shelf save that back in here. Now we can see we got all of our different buttons. So now we can listen and hear our filter. Right now it's still a low pass filter so it's got uh, all of the higher frequencies above where our frequency is set to getting cut off. That's the same one it was set to before. And then high pass filter is going to do the opposite. It's going to cut off all the frequencies below our frequency. On high pass and low pass, the Q is going to affect how peaked the frequency values near the cutoff frequency are going to be. On notch, this is going to be kind of like a, a band of frequencies, and this is going to decide how wide that band of frequencies is.
But on this one, gain is not used. So the gain will do nothing, but the Q will do something. For low shelf and high shelf, it's the opposite. There's gain, but there's no Q. The gain is going to decide how much of a shelf it is. The low shelf will be a shelf on the low end, and the high shelf will be a shelf on the high end. And you can find in the documentation, it'll tell you which kinds of filters use the Q and which kinds use gain and which ones do not. The last thing we'll do is we'll go into our styles and just add, I want these to all be the same width. And let's give those, I like border radius. And let's just center this real quick. We'll go in here, center. We'll put a div with a class name of center around these two buttons, and then we'll go back into our CSS and we'll say center transform translate x minus 50% margin left 50% text align center cool that looks pretty good um, we'll leave it there for right now um, something you could do you could try to conditionally render um, gain and Q uh, inputs depending on what type of uh, filter is being used. If that filter uses the Q or the gain or not. Next we'll look at moving all of this audio context kind of stuff into a React context because keeping it in an app.js parent component is quickly going to become really cluttered the more stuff we add to it. Right now it's already getting a little bit cluttered just with one oscillator and a filter. So we're gonna try to move that all away somewhere else away from our presentational logic. And we're also going to take a look at a really cool library called QWERTY Hancock, which is going to help us get up and running really quickly with our virtual keyboard setup.